Well, good day there. Today I'm just going to show a simple solution to plant box making. I stumbled upon this idea a couple of years ago, and it's really easy and anyone can do it, and it's cost effective. So I'll just show you what I've done around the property and show you what I'm doing and um, how simple it is, okay? Now this was the first model that I made and I used half rounds and don't use half rounds uh, because um, I had to cut, cut it, cutouts so it would all fit in. I had 53 cuts in this and it was really a pain. Um, the finished result is good but by using fence posts you don't have to do any of the cutting out and it still looks effective. So, but what the system is, you just put a frame around with um, strengthening supports in the middle and then this corrugated iron um, to hold the dirt in and that's it. Easy as. I'll show you the one I've made here. Fire that I do all the time now. And it's a fence post as I said. Um, 250 gap which brings the the planter box up to 520 and that's my wife likes that height so that's really good and it's really simple um, all you need is uh, to cut out or cut the length obviously uh, from the post and to cut out the uh, the 250 um, and then you just screw it together and I just drill with a long bit on it with um, 100 mil screws straight in no problem I'll just show you the one I'm making around here. Now this one here is three meters long because uh, I had two two garden sheds here, one point five each, so perfect. And this shed here is three meters long, so it fits in perfect. So um, I didn't even have to cut down the fence post. So that's one's going in here. And what, because it's three meters long, I've got two inserts in here just to make it a bit stronger so the dirt doesn't bulge out. And around the corner, you need to put an extra one, one on the end and one this way, uh, because the, obviously you're gonna put the metal inside there and you need something to screw it onto. As far as cutting them, I found I was using the drop saw, and of course the drop saw um, doesn't go right through. It just didn't cut it, if you don't mind the pun. Uh, with the 250 inserts, what I do, I use the skill saw. I found it's the best way to go about it. Uh, mark one off 250, run it through the skill saw, uh, put the uh, square on, obviously, get a straight line, and be really careful that you get a nice straight line. And then this measure again, measure again and cut, measure again and cut all the way up, then go down with a handsaw and very carefully cut straight through. And it, um, it works really well and that's the best way to go about it. Um, as I said, it's just a, it just doesn't really work unless you have a decent size one of these, a big one that cuts right through and then you've got no problem. But this one is not big enough. So see, once you've done all the cuts along, along the post, just one by one with a good saw. I went out and bought this new one. Um, you want a good one. It's only $12. It's amazing these days. You buy a saw so cheap. And you just go down the line and cut them off. Or 250. Brilliant. And they're your spacers. Okay. It's not rocket science. And the, um, the finished product is very effective. It's yeah, when it comes to putting these in, piece of cake, very straightforward. Just drill it in. I've got a longer shaft on the uh, longer drill bit. And then I have 100 mil screws. And I always put soap. My deceased ex-father-in-law was a joiner <laughs> in the joinery business. And one thing he told me, I'll never forget, put soap on the screws. And it just makes them go nice and easy, okay? So, 
And also, it's only the ones at the front that need to look perfect because everything at the back is going to be at the back and it's going to be covered up with a pile of dirt. <laughs> yeah. So, what I'll do, I'll just screw all these in and lift it into place. Um, I've actually got bird nest boxes up under the eaves and we haven't had, haven't had any joy. But if we get big shrubs here, I might put some against the shed. And hopefully next year, we're too late for this year, but hopefully next year we might be some birds nested in there. You never know. Yeah, yeah these are the um, bird boxes are made up, but no good under here. So hopefully when we put the new planter boxes, put some little trees in there and shrubs in there quite high, I'll put these onto the side of the shed, never know next year we might have a bit of success here. It must be a nice thing to do, eh? Yeah, cool. Now, just going to give it a paint job. Now, one thing, you only have to paint what you can kind of see. You don't have to paint everything, just the tops on the back. And then you obviously paint the front bit here. So, just um, don't want to waste paint, you know. Okay, so I'll just give this a very quick paint job and we'll be back to see you again later. Okay, cheers. Yeah, that was a quick paint job. <laughs> okay, so you don't need to paint them there. I don't need to paint the end here because there's another box going to go down that way. Okay, so the next stage is putting the cutting the tin and putting the tin in. Okay, I'll just run the, um, the grinder up here and cut this. Don't try this at home, I am a professional. <laughs> well, this is it with the tin inserted. Looks really tidy. Really simple, really tidy. And goes well with the dark stain. And I think that's a pitch, called pitch black uh, British paint. And um, with the tin, the worst part is cutting the tin. Really terrible. I ended up using good old faithful. And it makes a heck of a noise. Um, but it does the job. <laughs> so I just need to put one on the end there. I would have done it now, but I'd have to cut some more tin. I don't want to upset the neighbours at 6 o'clock at night. So um, I'll do that tomorrow. I can leave that end open because there's going to be another box going down the other end. So that's basically this box finished apart from the ending. So um, really good, eh? Really simple, easy, and anyone can do it. Okay? Cheers. Yeah, I'm just off to get four fence posts for this section. Uh, it's 2.4 to the door. So I'll get four 2.6s. And so then I'll come back and get into it. I'm also going to get some knee pads because um, it's a bit more kneeling down. You're nearly on the ground and um, my knees get a bit sore. <laughs> okay, see ya. Well, I got to this stage today. I was hoping to get a finish actually, but time ran out. I've um, set this one back a wee bit just to make the pathway a wee bit wider. So that'll probably end up being part of a shell corner. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so tomorrow I'll paint this and finish it. Um, it's going to take a ton of, um, it will take a ton of dirt in here. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of dirt, but that's okay. I'm going to give this a really fast paint job now. Are you ready? Here we go. Now, not everyone can paint that fast. You want to see that again? Right, here we go. Now, not everyone can paint that fast. Well, we're back here again. Now, this is a new... Uh, little grinder that I bought. Uh, the reciprocating saw does the job, but it's pretty wild. And <laughs> so hopefully a bit more tighter with this. As I said before, don't try this at home. I am a professional. has landed. <laughs> well there you go, that's the fin finish of them. Um, it's going to take 1.7 cubic meters of soil and we'll get that tomorrow and put that in and then we'll get um, some good potting mix bags and dig it into the top. So that's good, so just got it finished. Now I'm going to go and pick up Alex for lunch. <laughs> How's the plant box going? Really good, really good. Excellent. 
just need to enlarge it to put plants in it. <laughs> it's so large. That was a nice lunch break. <laughs> that was good. Now, it's finished now, basically. Uh, just, as I say, just fill up with dirt and put some topsoil, good topsoil on, and then get some plants. And yeah, yeah, Alex is right. It's going to take a few plants to fill this lot up, but that's okay, bit by bit. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for watching, and make one. <laughs> okay, see ya.